Hi, my name is Danielle and I am a fountain pen addict. I welcome you to this video as you are likely also a fountain pen addict or at least am I curious about why I have all of these pens in front of me. So let me start by saying hello and welcome to my Dandelion Diaries. I'm Danielle and I recently made a purchase when Amazon had their Prime Day kind of sale for October. Um, these are the Jin Hao 82 pens and they are very small compared to my hands. I mean, I have fairly large hands, I feel like. So they're, they're really small. They are the same size as a Pla uh, Pilot Prera and also a Pro Gear Slim, which I do not own. So I don't have that to compare today, unfortunately. But I wanted to make a video about these because these are so inexpensive. So this month of October, I have my currently inked pens being primarily all of my beginner friendly pens, right? They're the more cheap end. So like Twisbees are around 30 bucks, Pilot Metropolitans are around 30 bucks, Kakunos are like 12 bucks. I have a Preppy here, which is like five bucks. And then Lamy, Caveco, and this Pilot Prayer are also around 30 bucks. So these are relatively inexpensive in terms of the fountain pen world. As you know, s several have probably already noticed that a lot of creators use pens that are hundreds of dollars, which I do too, but I like to have a range and I like to use my beginner fountain pens too because they're good quality pens. And honestly, these ones I am have no fear of trying new things with because they're easy to replace because they're that inexpensive. Well, put these aside and in comes the Jin Hao 82. I honestly have been asleep apparently because I didn't even know these existed until now and they have been on the market for a few months. Um, I think almost a year, if not longer now actually. And these retail for as low as $2.50 on AliExpress. So I got mine on Amazon, like I said, so I paid I think $6 per with the sale and free shipping got here super fast because it's Amazon and I was really excited. They come in three different nib sizes. So they have a fine nib. A medium nib. A medium nib. And then they also have extra fine and they do have a food a nib. So I do not have an extra fine or a food a nib because one, I don't really write with extra fine all that often. And two, they didn't have any food a nibs available on the Amazon side, but they did have them on AliExpress and I wasn't willing to wait so long for AliExpress. So we stuck with mediums and fines, which is perfect because that's what I usually write with. I'm not going to ink up all of these because obviously that would be a bit redundant, but I am going to ink two of them up. So I'm going to ink up a medium and also a fine so we can see kind of the difference and I'll compare those to some of the other more beginner friendly fountain pens that I have inked up already. So let me do that really quick. The ink that I'm going to be using is Diamine Onyx Black. This is just a standard black ink. And the Jin Hao 82s do come with a converter, which is really nice. So if you had, if you buy the Jin Hao cartridges, you could use the cartridge instead of buying a bottle of ink. But since I have a bottle of ink, I am going to do that. And I can't get this one out now. Okay, there we go. It is a um, push. Let me see if I can get the camera to show it. There's no threads, so you don't screw the converter in. It just goes straight in. I do also want to mention if you get this pen, I had to clean mine before I used them. They did have blue ink in every single feed. So I do believe that they either test their pens or do some kind of um, dip mechanism before they put them out on the market. So yeah, there's that. I'm honestly not too worried about fill right now just because we're testing, but I would say for a first time fill, that is pretty good for a converter. <laughs> I didn't have to do it twice or anything like that. And of course, I already got ink on my fingers. Okay, so we're going to start with the Jin Hao 82 in the medium nib.
So right off the bat, the medium nib is definitely more of a Western fine, maybe even a Western extra fine. Um, I'm going to compare this to a platinum preppy medium real quick. which I know it is yellow ink, so it's not really super comparable because I use black for the Jinhao. But I'm also going to compare it to the Pilot Pereira, which is also in a medium, and these are like the same size pen. So I would say the line difference is it's slimmer than a traditional, like the Platinum Preppy Medium or the, even the Pilot Medium, but it's not by much, maybe like 0 0.08 millimeters. It's, it's really minuscule in terms of like difference. Now let's go ahead and try out the fine version of the Jinhao 82. The fine is honestly super fine. I would say that's, I think, the most fine nib I have ever written with. Um, I'll compare it to a Kakuno, Pilot Kakuno in a fine, which this is another really inexpensive starter pen. And then I'll even compare it to a Twisby Eco in extra fine, just so we can see that that is really fine. Not ooh, Eco. So as you can see, that is definitely a very fine nibbed pen. That's actually really nice. If you were to go for something with the extra fine, my guess is it would be even finer than that. Maybe even like a, a 0.38 or a 0.3 millimeter uh, line. I would say the fine is definitely more of like a 0.4. It reminds me a lot of my 0.4 Energel Klenna. We're, I'm going to test something out really quick. This is a Uni Jetstream in the 0.38 tip with ballpoint ink. And I just want to see if it's, yeah, it's the same thickness, if not thinner than a 0.38 ballpoint. So that is a very fine nibbed pen. That's honestly really nice. So the real reason I wanted to get these, um, besides their beginner friendliness and honestly being so cheap as they are, was because you can make a Franken pen with this. And I felt this is super appropriate for the month of October that we're in and that we can create a monster pen in a way um, or a Frankenstein pen and yeah I wanted to test it out so the cool thing about the Jinhao 82s is they are completely deconstructible from finial to cap to body so I'm going to deconstruct this one and I'll, I'll go over the names of these in a second after I deconstruct this so the cap comes off like that you just screw and it comes down the bottom you kind of have to finagle a little bit but you pull it straight off and even the gold uh, band comes off at the bottom too. So both finials are off now. I then can also take the cap, the midsection, and the bottom barrel. And now I have pretty much, I can make anything with this combination of pens or of pieces. So I could change the finials, I can change the body, I can change the cap, I can change the midsection. I can make every single one of those a different color if I wanted to the possibilities are absolutely endless. So I'm going to reconstruct this really quick. And 
And now I want to talk about the different colors that I purchased myself and the fact that there are still dozens more out there to choose from. If you've been following my channel for a little bit, you'll know that I pretty much stick to pretty neutral colored pens, earthy tones, blacks, whites, greens, browns, uh, translucents, things like that. I only have a few pens that are pink and purple and that's it. Um, so this is pretty much the colorway that I stand to stay in just because it's my happy place. There are still tons of blues, pinks, reds, purples. Um, I'm pretty sure there was like some sparkly uh, other colors. Like these ones too are sparkly. Um, yeah, just the amount of colorways is insane. And I know they're trying to probably compete with the amount of colors that Sailor has released for their Progear Slims, but it's a different brand and there definitely is inspiration when it comes to this kind of pen. So let me talk about the colors that I got. This is the Milk Tea. This is Transparent Dark Green. This one is Transparent White. This one is the Transparent uh, fl Fluorescent Transparent. I think this one's actually the Fluorescent White, not Transparent White. This is just the Black with Gold. This is Coffee. I think Coffee Fluorescent. This one is the ivory with gold, this is the transparent gold, and this is the olive gold. So pretty much what I found is if it has the shimmer inside it, it's going to have the fluorescent transparent in the name. So like this one, this one, this one, and this one all have those kind of like glitter particles in them and are slightly transparent. The white one is pretty opaque, um, but I believe it still said transparent in the title. All right, so now that we've named them off, I wanna make a Franken pen, and the color that I wanna go with are is black, which is one of the ones that I inked up. So I'm going to take the finials off of the black one. And I really wanted to put clear on the black. It's giving the Platinum 3776 heart vibes with the black barrels and the clear caps, which I believe there's a white version too, but I really wanted to see what this would look like with clear finials and I think it's so pretty. Wow. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to leave that one like that. So now comes... Let's see if we can make the one, um, so Sa Sailor and Yoseka did a, a collab pen called the Home Pen, and it had a clear cap like this, and it had olive finials. Um, I think the grip section was kind of like this pearlescent brown color, which obviously none of these are really pearlescent, but I think it was like that. And then I wanna say the body was like a yellow. So we'll use the ivory, cause it's the closest thing I have. This is kind of fun. <laughs> Highly recommend if you wanna pick up a couple of Jin Hao's to create a Franken pen definitely do it. This is definitely exciting. Okay, so I'm going to stick this in here. Which, if y'all didn't know, the Pro Gear Slim version of the home pen retails for like, I think, $340. Oops. So the pen that I am, wow. So the pen I'm frankening today, the Franken pen, <laughs> the Franken home pen, um, is going to cost me a whopping $6. <laughs> Well, maybe not, because it's pieced from other places. And then we put it all together. Hey, I think that looks pretty close. That looks really close. I'm actually really happy with that. Cool. Okay, yeah, I'm going to leave this one like this, because this is such an interesting... This is so interesting. Wow. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely leaving that one like that. That's so cool. So now let's... Let's do this way. We'll do the milk tea on the transparent body. 
with the white finials. Or wait, we'll do the we'll do the white grip section to match the white finials. So that way when it's uncapped. Something like that maybe? Because then if if we post it, it still matches. Yeah, I think that's cool. I'll leave that like that. Why not? And then, so we have some milk tea parts here, a white part, and a sparkly part. And we still have black finials we need to work with. Hmm. I think I'm just going to put the black finials on the transparent olive because I think that would look really neat. Something about the black finials just look really good. And I'm not, I'm not touching this one. I really like the look of the white with the black. That one's going to stay that way. Okay, so I think we're done with those. So now we have these three to play with. Hmm. This is tough. Do I want to even do anything with this? Okay, wait. So Christmas pudding. What did that one look like? I want to say oops, Sailor's version of Christmas pudding was like green and brown. So I think it was, oh, I think it had red finials actually. This is probably close enough though. Okay, we're gonna give this a shot. Cause I wanna say that it was like a different color, like brown or red finials. It had like a brown midsection like this. And then I want to say it's something like this, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I'm kind of guessing with this one, but I think it was something like this. I'm going to leave it alone. We'll, we'll say that one's done. Our Franken pens are commencing slowly. Um, and then I really want to see what the coffee would look like with a lighter finial. I think this would look really pretty. Like the, like make a latte pen almost. So like milky tea or maybe like, I don't know. I know it's called milk tea, but I would probably name this something different if I'm going to put the coffee and stuff together. And then we'll do the... We'll do transparent with this one. Yeah, I really like that. That's actually really pretty. And then if you post it, you can see the transparent insides. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that one like this too. Okay, so we have a few pen body parts <laughs> left here. Um, yeah, so I have a clear demonstrator here, which I guess I could take apart. Hmm. I don't know if I want to do anything with this one, actually. We might just leave the clear demonstrator to be a clear demonstrator and then put the green finials on these. Like this, maybe? I don't know. I feel like that one looks kind of off, but I think, I think we'll call that good for now. <laughs> All this to say, I just made a whole bunch of different color combinations with, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pens. So the possibilities of whatever color you want is endless. Um, especially if you get more of the more jewel toned or pastel colors, I'm sure you could create some really pretty combinations. And since these are relatively inexpensive, I say, why not? You can find out what you like. If Sailor ever comes out with the version that you've created yourself, maybe you know that you like the way that feels and you'd wanna buy it and spend that kind of money on it. I think in terms of writing sample, they did a really good job. 
I preferred the medium nib just because I like a bolder writer, but the fine was, it's stunning. Honestly, I would write with the fine for like taking notes or anything like that if I had to write quickly, just because it is very, I don't know, it's very fine and I could fit a lot in a, a small space if I'm being honest. So yeah, I still prefer the medium nib. If they ever come out with a bold, I'll definitely try it out, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the choices I have made. If you're interested in more of the gin hells, I do have a Amazon link in the description and I will receive a small commission because I am an Amazon affiliate. So just keep that in mind if you click my link, but I think these are so fun and I probably will pick up more if they come out with more colors that are something that I like to play with. I think it's a good idea if you want to spend money on a pen that you're going to gift a friend. Um, they are, like I said, very cheap, especially if you order them off of AliExpress. They are incredibly inexpensive. And in terms of quality, I mean, I don't think this would be a forever pen. I think it would break over time just because it is more of a plastic type barrel, but you're getting what you're paying for. I mean, it is what it is. The, the nib is steel. It will last I think as long as you would need it to, but I think the pen body would break down before the nibs would break down. All right, I think I'm gonna end the video here. Let me know which Franken pen combination was your favorite. I'm I'm starting to think that my home recreation is my favorite over the black with the clear finials. I'm not gonna lie, um, or maybe the one that I kind of made look like a coffee latte over here. It's so tough, but yeah, I'd love to know which Franken pen you think is your favorite in the comments, or if you have any combinations you think I should try since I I have all of these to play with now. But yeah, I want to thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I appreciate you guys being here and for experiencing the joy of fountain pens and being a fellow fountain pen addict if if you are one. If, if not, welcome to the wormhole that you're about to fall into. But yeah, thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.